Right, today's daily rehab is about hip thrusts. Now, today what I'm going to show you is how to do them properly, but also what we see in the gym and when people are doing it, what they're doing wrong and how to correct that to get the most out of that hip thrust to make sure it's a glute and lower leg hammy exercise, not a lower back strengthening exercise. So the other thing we'll also do is show you how to go from you know, a heavy weight like this, which is the 20s, to make it 60, right? But that elevates it off the floor. How do you start off with a lower weight? So we're gonna show you how to do that. Part of that's using a pole and then lighter weights and elevating. So I'll show you that too. But listen, let's go back to the pole because then I can show you what I mean by the changes in the pelvis. So if I just use your average pole, which is the best way for you guys to start, if you're gonna do hip thrust for your glutes, this is probably where you need to go back to to get your form right. So first things first, you can use like just your sofa at home. If you're on lockdown and you don't have any gym to go to, just use your sofa, pad it out with your mat, easy peasy. Use your kitchen broomstick. That's an easy thing to use to try and guide you to pretend that that's the heavy bar. So you can work on your pelvic and lumbar spine position and your activation, get that form correct before you start loading the heck out of it with your waist at home. So what I like people doing is nice sort of hit just a wee bit wider than your hip, feet apart, okay? Make sure they're not out splayed, nice and straight, all right? And knees over your feet, not knees inwards, of course, okay? We don't want too wide, we also don't want going inwards, so now it's nice and straight through there. Um, the biggest thing we see though, is not necessarily about foot position, it's about what they're doing at their pelvis. So when a person comes up into this position, what they tend to be in to start with is in extension. Okay, now we want them in neutral. So if you're started in this position here, sort of belly out, arch, ready to go, you've already loaded your lumbar spine and prep, you're ready to go. So you're telling your brain, let's go lumbar spine and extend through there. So some people who get pain with this or fatigue in their lower back are already sitting jacked up into extension. Now that's an easy default position to be in. Like it's, it's harder to try and maintain neutral. That's hard, okay? Because it requires control and core and all the muscles are talking to, to the brain. It's much easier to throw into extension but you're not getting the benefit out of your glutes and you're gonna fatigue in your back. So what you've got to try and think about is not being in full flexion here when you come up. You don't want to be in flexion, all right? You've got to try and avoid the full extension when you come up. You've got to be in neutral. So just find halfway between the two. So you go full extension, drop into flexion, where's that halfway mark? Now that, then you try and stabilize. So you've got to try and use your abdominals to hold that position there so your back stays neutral when you come up. Because let's face it, this is a hip hinge. You wouldn't flex and round out your back in a deadlift, right? So same drill, it's a bridge, it's a hip hinge, it's the same movement, you just supine. So when you come up, you've got to think, this stays in neutral the whole way. I'm extending at the hips. So when I come up, I want to maintain neutral the entire time. So when I get to the top, that's hip extension, not back extension. The other thing too you've got to think about is when you come up, don't try and overcompensate by doing a little posterior tilt at the top, a little glute tuck to try and get extra glutes. You should be in neutral the whole way and the glutes should be on all that point there. So when you arrive, you don't need to do a little posterior tilt like that, okay? It should be bang, close the, close the gate if you like, that's extended, that's neutral. Exactly like you're doing a deal. If you wouldn't do a little posterior tilt, and a loaded deadlift, and this is gonna be a loaded hip thrust, so same drill. Also, don't look down at the bar when you come up. So you start looking there, when you start, when you come up, just hinge back so your neutral spine through here. Same with the deadlift, okay? The spine is trying to be almost like a plank, if you like. The hinging mechanism comes through the hips. Now to get that drive through there, what I want you to practice is weight through your heels. So get those heels loaded up, okay? Hold that bar with your hands, preferably wide, because that's what you're gonna be doing with that hip thrust. And then just push through your heels and extend the hips and get that right of extension. Now the good thing to do at this point here is to have an isometric hold there. So just hold it, get that glute squeeze on, get used to that activation through your glutes, because remember this is a great <laughs> glute exercise. And then slowly control it on the way down, all right? 
get the squeeze at the top, feel that activation, and maybe that's all you need. You might not need the weights to start off with because you just need to get that glute activation going, get those glutes firing. But when you come down, don't just drop and drop it down. I see too many up, bang, and just down. There's no control on the way down. Remember, that means you're not doing any eccentric work, really, for the glute on the way down. So just as much as you're thrusting upwards, and you might go for like the power, but unless you've got the form, there's no point in putting power through the system. Get the technique and the form right. So slow it down. At the same time, learn to slow it down eccentrically on the way down. Okay? So that's like a bench press. Power up, slow down. Okay? Same sort of drill. You get way more muscle work done and control work done and a bit of safety and injury prevention through that movement. Now, this is obviously... 20 and 20, if you're working in kilos, and 60, okay? Now, if you're worried about, oh, that's too hard on my pelvis, you just need to use, just get a bar towel. You're probably at home, a bar towel like this is way easier if you haven't got a, because you probably haven't got a foam pad like they have in the gym. Just fold up the bar towel, put that under, and there's your foam pad, okay? Easy peasy. But remember, this is 60 kilos, okay? Now, it's sort of pretty good as far as height goes. Now because I can just go straight from the floor and straight up, okay? But if you want to go lower in the weight, which is what I highly recommend, if you lower that weight, it's going to lower the bar and you can't get under. But I've got to work around for that. So the easiest thing to do, if you're going to drop the weight, of course, I put 10s on here, so that makes that whole thing 40. But it lowers it down. I can't, you can't get your legs under, especially if you're a big bloke or a big girl. You can't get your legs under, right? So you're going to have to elevate it. Now, the easiest thing in the gym to do, if you're in the gym, is put... A couple of stage boxes, big long box, you can roll it back and forth. What do you see at home, all right? At the moment, what I've got is the 20 kilo plate you had, all right, and the 10's there. And I've just got a razor here. Now, at home, you might just use a bit of wood, something like that, but you need a rolling surface to get that on and off. Otherwise, it's too hard to get under, okay? So I've used the plate as a rolling surface. So what you need to do is line up the whole of the plate with that because at some point, it's got to stay a little bit more stable and stationary, but then you can sort of roll it back and forth from that. So what I mean is, from there, you're gonna to have to lift the plate, lift this up, remember it's 40 kilos, make sure you can do that, and get it in the right position there. So it's even both ways, okay? And then it's sort of semi-stable at that point there. Then it's gonna be high enough for me to get my legs under, and I can still roll it on and off. So, this is sort of like if you like, a way of, see if I, I just roll that forward, under I get, happy days, then I can just drop it in the holes, so while I get ready, it's stable, it's not going to go anywhere, okay? Because to be face, let's, to be honest, we don't want to roll off and crush your legs, okay? You've got to have a gap there, you've got to have a bit of safety. So, this goes under, again, same sort of drill, and then I can bring it back off the little holes, and there I go. And it's in the same position, roughly, as I had with 20 kilo plates on the floor. So I can do the same again, and you gotta think, it's 20 kilos lighter, I've got a much more ability to control my pelvis at this point, I've got some time to spend on working out my position, I can actually slow it down, because it's lighter, but I've still got that load, so I get the strengthening, I get the feedback, and I've also got time to hold it at the top. If I want that isometric hold, up I come, ISO hold there, slowly down, tap the ground, up you go again, and down again with this one, if it's a wee bit higher, you just can just stay there, you don't have to drop to the ground, okay, you don't have to rest between each rep, which is sometimes quite good to maintain that endurance of doing these repetitions, because the same thing in the deadlift, you wouldn't really drop it to the ground, especially in Romanian deadlift, you're not going to drop to the ground and have a rest into that position there, okay, so that's a really nice way of doing it, and then you can safely roll that off and get out and away you go. So give that option a try. Remember, you're after technique and control of the pelvis is paramount. Getting that neutral spine, use your abdominals to control that so you get the maximum force production out of your glutes and the maximum benefit as well as a bit of injury prevention. See you next time.